Well, good evening and welcome on this Christmas Eve. How different this year is to last year. Last year, we're in the middle of heat and bushfires. Uh, now it's cold. It was snowing today, apparently, in, in Tasmania. So, uh, And we also have the COVID changes that have occurred through this year and therefore the changes to what we, how, what we can do and how we can do it. But it doesn't mean that we can't stop to worship the one who came into our world, the Lord Jesus Christ, who came to save us. And we celebrate the wonder of that tonight. And so we can sing with permission uh, as long as we have our masks on. And let us sing our opening carol, Once in Royal David City. sentence of scripture for tonight. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the hymn of praise together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Please be seated. I'll say the prayer of the day together. Eternal God, who made this most holy night to shine with the brightness of your one true light, bring us who have known the revelation of that light on earth to see the radiance of your heavenly glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. First reading. The first reading is taken from Isaiah, chapter 9, reading from verse 2 to verse 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness. From that time on and forever, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Hear the word of the Lord. The psalm we read tonight is Psalm 96, and we'll read it by all half verses. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his holy name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is more to be feared than all gods. As for the gods of the nations, they are mere idols. It is the Lord who made the heavens. Majesty and glory are before him. Beauty and power are in his sanctuary. Render to the Lord, you families of the nations. Render to the Lord glory and might. Render to the Lord the honour due to his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. Say among the nations that the Lord is king. He has made the world so firm that it can never be moved, and he shall judge the peoples with equity. 
Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the fields rejoice and everything in them. Shall the trees of the earth. For he comes, he comes to judge the earth, shall judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke, chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In those days, Caesar Augustus instituted issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the available. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks by night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, They spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, having heard the story, we'll now sing the story in the words of While Shepherds Watched Their Flocks by Night. Let us sing.
Father, we do thank you for the gift of your Son. And as we consider that in our time together tonight, we pray that your Spirit may open our hearts and minds to reveal more of the wonder of who you are and what you have done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Well, did you know that Santa had met Jesus? Most people shake their head, except if you were here at the 6.30 service where I told the story from a children's book, uh, you would know, be nodding your head. I know. I know some people. Yes, there's a couple of people who were here earlier. Well, I have to admit that this picture is rather misleading because it wasn't Santa meeting a baby Jesus. It was actually the other way around, where as a young child, Santa met the risen Lord Jesus. The story goes back to a man named St Nicholas, who is the real person behind Santa Claus. His name, Santa Claus, is another way of saying St Nicholas. Santa is another word for saint, and Klaus is a shortening of the name Nicholas, and hence St Nicholas is Santa Claus. Santa Claus, or Nicholas, St Nicholas, was born around 260 AD in Batara, Asia Minor, which is now Turkey. His parents were faithful Christians, even though it was a time of persecution for Christians. They raised their son Nicholas to know and love Jesus. And so hence, Nicholas met and came to know Jesus as a child and grew in his faithfulness to Christ as he matured into adulthood. During his later teens, somewhere between 16 and 19 years of age, both of his parents succumbed to an epidemic. So he would be able to, us, to relate with us in our year that we've had with a global pandemic. He experienced the worst of such a disease, losing both parents so young. His faith supported him through that, along with his uncle, who happened to be the abbot at a nearby monastery. Now, coming from a wealthy family, his parents left him a large inheritance. As someone who knew and followed Jesus, he sought to live his life by putting God first. Now, Nicholas was in a similar position to the rich young man that we read of in Matthew chapter 19. However, unlike the rich man in the Bible story, Nicholas took very seriously Jesus' words in verse 21. Go, sell your possessions and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. One of Nicholas's first and most famous acts involved a once wealthy man who had now lost everything. He had three daughters that were of an age to be married, but in that society you needed a dowry in order for them to be married. Without that dowry, they faced the possibility of being sold into slavery. One night after hearing of the family's plight, Nicholas took some of the gold that his parents had left him, put it into a small sack, and then threw it through the open window of their home. There was enough money in that sack for the eldest daughter's dowry. In seeing the effect that this gift had on the family, Nicholas returned the following two nights in a row as well and put another two sacks of gold through that window as an anonymous gift to that family. Now, the third, on the third night, though, the father of the girls was rather curious to know who was doing this, and so he hid in the dark. And when that money came through the window, he came, jumped out and caught Nicholas in the act. But Nicholas swore the man to secrecy because he wanted to do it anonymously. But it's pretty hard to keep something like that secret, and it soon became known about his generosity and kindness. Now, around 295 AD... Nicholas took a journey to Myra. It just so happened that right at that time, the church there were trying to decide who their next bishop would be. But in their discussions, they were had come to an impasse where they couldn't find the appropriate person. And so, for some reason, they decided to pray to God and pray that the next person who walked in the church would be the next bishop of Myra. Guess who it was? 
That's right, Nicholas was the one who walked through that door. He was in his early 30s, making him one of the earliest and youngest bishops ever in the church. But no sooner had Nicholas been consecrated as bishop than he was arrested on religious charges, imprisoned without trial, beaten and tortured because of his faith. For much of his time as Bishop of Myra, Christians were a hated minority and were targeted by angry mobs. And unfortunately, we still see that happen in parts of the world today. But Nicholas held on to his faith in Christ throughout the holy episode. With the rise of Constantine as emperor over the Roman Empire, Nicholas was freed and able to continue then his ministry as the Bishop of Myra, since Constantine himself became a Christian. Now, there are many, many stories of his generosity and his love for his people and his concern for justice. Now, I have to admit that when you're reading through the star, all, all of the different um, articles, in later years, a lot of fanciful things were added to the story. If we go back to the earlier accounts, we can find some quite reliable ones. Now, for example, during a famine, Nicholas secured a large amount of wheat from ships that were heading to Constantinople so that his people wouldn't starve. On another occasion, Nicholas heard that three innocent citizens were about to be executed by the Romans, and so he risked his own life to save them. And then, I guess a number of us would like this idea of when Constantine raised the taxes of the citizens of Myra to an unreasonably high level, Nicholas sailed to Constantinople to see Constantine in person and to plead the case and persuade him to lower the unreasonable taxes. Finally, in the later part of his life, Nicholas, with over 100 other bishops, was invited by Constantine to the Council of Nicaea to sort out some of the heretical teaching that had arisen in the church. The source of the heresy was Arius, who had denied the equality of God the Father with Christ the Son. There is a story that Nicholas argued so passionately for Christ that according to some, some witnesses, there some sources, he slapped Arius in the face. And hence we have this um, cartoon. It's probably a fanciful story that was added to, to indicate the passion with which Nicholas argued and stood up for the truth of the gospel. It's actually from this, that following through this, that we get what we say each week in our service, the Nicene Creed, that outlines the truths that came from this conference. So Nicholas was a man who stood up for and taught the truth of the Christian faith. He'd met Jesus as a child, he grew up in his knowledge and relationship with Jesus, and he wanted others to know the truth about Jesus so that they could have an eternal relationship with him. Nicholas' concern for truth is depicted in the earliest painting we have of him. And there's many others that are based on this since, with him holding a Bible, the source of truth, and his other hand, being raised to a in a blessing, his desire for others to be blessed by God. The real Saint Nick was dedicated to following Jesus and a man of unshakable faith. He was generous to those in need and he was concerned for justice whenever there was a wrong. These aspects of Saint Nicholas have morphed into Santa with a whole lot of other stuff that's been thrown in. But the whole reason that St Nicholas gave gifts was because he had met Christ and spent his life serving, serving the Lord Jesus. Christmas is about knowing and following Jesus, God's gift to us. Jesus came that first Christmas to show us the way to the Father and to eternal life with him. St. Nicholas knew that, and he lived his life in gratitude for the gift of life that Christ had given him, loving God above all things, 
and also loving others, caring especially for the poor, the needy and the oppressed, which is quite a far cry from the commercialisation of Santa today. So we encourage this Christmas to stop and remember Christ, God's gift to us, and to follow Christ like St Nicholas did, responding with gratitude and generosity to others. Now in the weeks leading up, the four weeks of Advent, we've been lighting uh, these candles. Candle of hope, peace, joy, love. All that Christ came into the world to provide for us. And so not tonight we come to lighting the centre candle, the Christ candle, and the others are snuffed out because in Christ all, that, all those are fulfilled and available to us in him. That will follow the, the words on the screen. God our Father, in the beginning when all was very dark, you said, let there be light, and there was light and life throughout the universe. Lord Jesus, when the world was full of darkness, living in anxiety, confusion and sin, you came as the light of the world, bringing life eternal. Come, light of life, lighten the darkness in our lives with your mighty word of love. Lighten our hearts with the joy of your promised coming. Lighten our world with the hope that faith in you still brings. Help us who live by your light to shine as lights in your world. Let us stand and affirm the faith of the Nicene Creed that St Nicholas had a part of actually bringing about together. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as we come to a time of prayer. Let us pray for all people and for the church throughout the world. Most wonderful God, on this Christmas Eve, we pause to give thanks for the gift of your Son, our Saviour, born in human flesh to save us. 
we pray for all those in need of your saving grace today. Holy God, hear our prayer. We remember that on this holy night there was no room for your son in the inn. As we eat, drink and exchange presents, help us to remember with generous hearts the hungry, the oppressed and the refugees. Protect with your love those who have no home and all who live in poverty. Provide for all for whom Christmas is a difficult time of the year. Holy God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Your Christ came as a light shining in the darkness. Bring comfort to all who are in pain or distress or who suffer in darkness and despair. We remember especially those known to us and all who care for them in hospitals, nursing homes and at home. We pray for all affected by COVID-19 here and around the world and for the protection, sorry, and the, for the production and distribution of effective vaccines to curb the impact of this disease. Holy God, hear our, our prayer. prayer. On this holy night, the angels sang, peace to God's people on earth. We pray for peace in nations where there is war and conflict. Strengthen those who work for peace and justice and give wisdom to the leaders of the nations that they may govern for the good of all. Holy God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. As Christians the world over celebrate Christ's birth, open our hearts that he may be born in us today. May we, with the angels, the shepherds and the wise men, worship him as our King and Saviour, Jesus Christ the Lord. Holy God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Accept our prayers, loving God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come. Your, your will, will be, be done, done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We come to our time of confession. I think there's a lot of people looking on 2020 who think 2020 is a year that we could, it's good to put behind us uh, for a whole lot of reasons. And there's also that opportunity of things in which Maybe we haven't lived up to our own expectations, let alone God's expectations. We've let people down or we're, you know, we haven't done what we thought we should do and all, there's all sorts of things, of regrets we might have. And confession is a time of just being able to lay them all before God to have a clean start as uh, we go into Christmas and as we prepare for the new year and praying that 2021 will be a better year than 2020. That God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Christ, the grace of God, has dawned upon the world with healing for all. Let us bring our weaknesses and infirmities to him, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. God the Father, maker of heaven and earth, have, have mercy, mercy on us and, and enfold, enfold us. God the Son, redeemer and light of the world, have, have mercy, mercy on, on us and, and save us. God the Holy Spirit who transforms us in the way of truth, have, have mercy, mercy on us and change us. For accepting life yet living it without you, forgive, forgive us, us, Lord. For living without concern for others, forgive, forgive us, Lord. For ignoring oppression, injustice and wrong, forgive, forgive us, Lord. For neglecting your will and commandments, Forgive, forgive us, Lord. For failing to love and forgive others, forgive, forgive us, Lord. For following the false hopes and desires of this world, forgive, forgive us, Lord. For allowing busyness and celebrations to overshadow the gift of your Son and all it means, forgive, forgive us, us, Lord. Grant that, that we, we may treasure, treasure Christ in our hearts, hearts that, that his, his word may shine, shine forth in our lives so, so others, others may, may know, know of his, his salvation. salvation.
God desires that none should perish, but that all should turn to Christ and live. In response to his call, we acknowledge our sins. God pardons those who humbly repent and truly believe the gospel. Therefore, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, this would normally be our offertory song. Uh, with COVID regulations, we can't take a collection because passing a plate around can pass germs around. Uh, there is a plate as you head out uh, that you could put a, a donation in or there is also a tap point uh, where you can just use your card and don't have to touch money or touch anything else. Uh, and in uh, the pew sheet, there is also information if you want to do a direct deposit into our account uh, for those who are willing to support the ongoing ministry of, of this parish. Also, uh, as we come to communion, because of COVID, we have to do things differently to what we have in the past. And so uh, we'll be offering the community people coming down uh, that want to receive communion, coming down here receiving uh, the bread on this side, then picking up, there's individual cups here, pick up a cup from there, come around uh, to the person standing here with a cup, um, and they'll say the words as you drink the, the wine there. So you eat the bread there, drink the cup there. There is a, bit, a little bin as you go past that you can put the cups into and return to your seats. And we need to move in a clockwise uh, movement around the church. So I appreciate your patience again for just all these little adjustments that we've all had to make. It's been quite an interesting lead up to Christmas, not quite knowing what we could or couldn't do and, and having to change as, we, as we've gone along. But at least we can meet, which is much better than what happened at Easter time when we were shut. So it's great that we can meet, even with the different regulations that we have to abide by. So let us stand and sing. Angels is meant to be, not angles. <laughs> Angels from the realms of glory. from the realms of glory when your flight over
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All glory and honour be yours now and always, mighty Creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who by the power of your Spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. In your word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give knowledge of your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine, and we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and again giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. And looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit. Unite us in the body of your Son. And bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. God of heaven, dwelling among us, we thank you for feeding us with this holy food. By your grace, keep us ever faithful to your word made flesh, that as his body in the world, we may bring your presence to all people. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Well, as for notices, uh, you would have received a pew sheet as you came in. It has information in there. Our regular services at the moment are at 10 a.m. Uh, we, we've gone from two services to one just because of the COVID cleaning that's involved. And you're welcome to come along any Sunday at 10. Uh, also, uh, in Term 2, we run an Alpha course. So if you want to find out more about who Jesus is and what he came to do and why, um, come and ask your questions. That's what the Alpha course is all about. Uh, so mark that in your diaries for Term 2 and get in touch with us and book in. You get a free meal. It runs for eight weeks and, as I said, explores what Christianity is about with the opportunity uh, to ask, ask questions and to find out. And I'd like to put out the, chat, the challenge, come along and try and stump me on questions. I'm sure that will be quite easy to do, mind you, but um, give it a go. I, I like the challenge. Well, there's the most appropriate hymn, I think, to conclude on. Uh, for an evening service like this, midnight service, is Silent Night, Holy Night. Let's stand and sing.
before I do the blessing, I wish you all a very Merry Christmas. It is now Christmas Day. Uh, so enjoy the rest of your day. And I do pray that, uh, as I said, 2021 will be a safe, healthy and COVID-free uh, year for you. As we go into the dawn of a new Christmas day, may the peace of Christ that lightens the soul with faith, lifts the spirit with hope, and leavens the world with love, be yours tonight and always. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.